Hello, this is Dampro. Welcome to my vehicle rigging tutorial series. We're in part three. In the last tutorial, we went through and added three bones to our rig, and that would be our root bone, as our main location, rotation, and scaling controller for our rig. We have a body bone, so we can animate the up and down action of our body. We can also rotate it forward and back, and side to side. And we have a drift controller, so we can get our back and forth animations, or our drifting animations. So, now that we have our center of our um, rig setup, we can start extending out to our wheels. So I've actually come to the conclusion that uh, this is actually going to be a little bit difficult to explain. So uh, rather than explain everything uh, while I'm going, I'm actually going to kind of go into a rapid fire mode here where I uh, add a bunch of bones and then I'll explain everything and how they work and how everything is working together at the end. I think it'll be just a little bit easier. So um, I'm actually going to add uh, even more complexity here. So as I mentioned before, I was going to uh, tab back and forth between pose mode and edit mode. I'm now going to tab into edit mode of our meshes so I can select specific parts of that uh, mesh like these two faces and do shift S cursor to selected and that will allow me to um, put my cursor at very precise points so I can add my bones to that. So uh, I want a bone that's going to be right at the center of this upper swing arm right on this bar. I need to go back to my armature with shift A, it's going to add a bone right at that point where the head of that bone is um, right where my 3D cursor is. So I'm going to rename this bone. I'm going to call this mch.grd for ground ik.001. So MCH is uh, kind of designated as a mechanism bone. That's to kind of uh, uh, tell me and the animator that this is a mechanism bone. It's not something that they need to directly animate. So, um, And it actually has other uses a little bit later on that I'll be covering. But uh, for now, I'll be using... Uh, whenever I'm uh, creating a mechanism bone, it's not going to be directly um, animated by the uh, animator. I will uh, append this MCH uh, prefix to it. And I'm using a very simple naming convention. Uh, convention of dot zero zero one so when I duplicate the bone or extrude a bone from another one it's going to sequentially number those bones so I want to parent MCH ground IK dot zero zero one to my body bone control P keep offset and next I want to just set up uh, I'm going to snap my 3D cursor again to another point on my mesh I'm going to select the end of this um, upper swing arm these two faces shift S cursor do selected and now I can go back to my armature in edit mode, select the tail end, shift S, selection to cursor, and now I have a very precise um, um, position bone there. Looks like my X axis is going this way, Z is up. As I mentioned, I'm just going to kind of rapid fire add a few bones here. Um, first, I want to uh, parent, uh, I already parented it to that bone, so I'm good. All right, go back to front uh, orthographic view with the IK.001 um, selected the tail and do E to extrude G and X. I'm going to drag out a very small bone here to uh, be about at the center of the uh, wheel and then E to extrude G Z. I'm going to drag another bone down so the tail end is um, right at the ground level here and I'm actually going to make sure that my Z is zero. I'm going to type that in and I'm going to go to side view E to extrude G Y. I'm going to drag out a new bone from that point and then selecting the whole bone, shift D, duplicate one, scale one up. Now I'm going to uh, rename some of these here. So this smaller bone here is actually going to be MCH ground detect.001. I want to parent that ground detect bone to my drift control. Control P, keep offset. This larger bone here is actually going to be an animation controller, so we'll give it a normal name. This will be wheel height.001. And I want to parent wheel height.001 to my ground detect bone. Control P, keep offset. And I already have this chain started up here. Because I extruded these other ones, they are already parented in a chain right, right now with connected. And you can always check that in the bone properties uh, by selecting them. Uh, this is uh, IK.003. It is parented connected to uh, 02, and 02 is connected to 001. All right, so now what are all of these bones for? Uh, this main one here, this uh, small one, ground detect.001, this is going to be um, 
the main ground detection system here so I'm going to actually add a bone constraint to it it's going to be a shrink wrap constraint so I'm going to select it and add that shrimp wrap constraint but I'm not going to configure it right now because I actually don't want it to um, affect the positions of, a, of my bones here when I'm in pose mode uh, because that can actually throw off when I'm parenting um, meshes here so I'm going to come back and configure this later but what it's going to do is I'm going to uh, set the target eventually I will add a ground plane I will tell it to target that ground plane here and then it is going to shrink wrap the head of this bone to the nearest surface point so that is uh, the ground detection bone all right um, the reason I parented it to the drift bone is so that ground detection bone will always um, travel along with it when I tr go back and forth it's going to keep that bone directly underneath the wheels when I'm dr doing my drift animation obviously we don't want to parent it to our uh, body bone because when we're moving up and down um, we don't want that to affect um, that position so um, that is why I parented it to that drift bone instead of the body or the root because if we were to parent it to the root when I use the drift bone it wouldn't stay underneath the wheel for for that so that is the function of our ground detect bone now I parented the wheel height bone to that because there's going to be situations um, once I've configured this shrink wrap where it's actually working on the ground plane that I want it to shrink to um, I will not be able to pull that bone off of that point um, because the shrink wrap will keep overriding it every time I try to do that so that is why I parented this wheel height bone to that because as we're traveling along if you hit a bump really hard sometimes you're going to want to animate the um, wheel coming off the ground and that's what's going to allow me to do that so simple parent child relationship will do that uh, the other thing that their wheel height is going to do is it's going to be the IK target for an IK constraint now an IK constraint is a special constraint that can work on multiple bones all at one time so it's very um, useful for doing mechanical um, types of um, rigging and that's why I'm using it here and this IK chain is going to be a three uh, bone chain to work on uh, all three of these to stick the uh, wheel to the ground and then auto rotate these other pieces to have that uh, the swing arm rotate up and down so let me just add that um, constraint and I can show you the final results and then hopefully that will all become apparent so uh, this last or first bone in the chain IK.001 is parented to the to our um, our body bone and the reason for that is I want this bone to always stay relative to this point right here on uh, on the uh, body itself now when I parent our um, uh, parent the uh, actually I can do this right now I can just parent our upper swing arm to that bone control P keep offset so that is what I what I'm looking for now I'm just going to use the constraint to auto rotate that so let's set up our IK constraint now there are two ways to add constraints you can actually go over here and just add them manually and but then you need to um, auto fill in your or you need to manually fill in your target uh, information so it's actually a better way and quicker way to do this so if you select the bone that's going to be the target of your constraint and then you shift select the bone that's going to get the constraint now on an IK constraint it's always going to go on the last bone in the train you want it to affect so that would be this one here IK.003 and you can just do control shift C and you can add constraints with targets if I pick inverse kinematics from my constraint it's going to pick the target armature and then auto uh, fill in this wheel height dot zero zero one which is the bone I had uh, pre-selected here as that target so I find that's uh, far quicker to do especially when you start adding a lot of different constraints to your armatures now next I need to configure um, the IK constraint so by default it's going to come in with a chain length of zero and when you have a chain length of zero it's going to try to auto rotate every bone uh, it's going to look at the parenting hierarchy and follow it all the way back and auto rotate every one of those bones all the way back to uh, where it can't find a parent anymore now currently if you see this relationship line here it is actually pointing all the way back to the root bone so with a chain length of zero it's following it all the way back if I was to actually move this you can see everything just kind of goes all wobbly and weird now I only want it to affect these three bones so I'm going to select this bone and change that chain length to two or three so it affects these three uh, in addition to working on all three of these bones here we can actually tell each bone how we want it to rotate so there's actually a special space 
or a special spot uh, in um, bone properties. So if you select one of these bones and roll down, you can find the inverse kinematics panel here. And this is where we can tell um, each bone if we want to lock specific axes, we can add stiffness to those axes. We can actually limit how far uh, they're allowed to rotate. And um, we can also um, make them stretch if we wish. Now, stretching isn't going to come in, and we're not going to change the stiffness values, but the um, how they rotate is uh, going to be important. And before I get too far here, I need to go back and make sure that all my axes are lining up here. So I've got x-axis going this direction on the first one. This little one here has x-axis going the same direction. This one is actually turned. I'm going to roll this to negative 90. Nope, it's got to be plus 90. And that will set that x-axis the same direction. All right, so back to our inverse kinematics uh, setup here. Now, I actually don't want this bone to rotate at all, which might seem a little bit weird, but I basically want these two bones to act as an L-shape. And by locking all these these axes, this bone is always going to try to point at the head and by not allowing it to move at all, it's basically going to force this one um, to rotate. Now on the second bone here, this middle one, uh, what I want it to do is only rotate on its x-axis. So um, basically these two bones are going to act as an L-shaped bone, so uh, that's something that you can uh, create that uh, with um, by locking um, these axes. So if I move this around, you'll see that those bones are kind of uh, staying as an L shape, and that's exactly what I want because I want this height to stay relative at all at all times. Now on this first bone, I only want it to rotate on its x axis, so I don't want any side to side or twisting. So I'm going to lock Y and Z. And if I move this now, you'll notice that our swing arm now is only rotating on its x axis. And um, we've got our wheel height here that's pretty much set. It's always going to be straight with this point. So hopefully now you can see why I wanted this L-shape action here. That's why I've locked everything. So our wheel height is always going to uh, stay the same uh, now that we have this set up. Now I know that's kind of weird and a little bit uh, involved. Next up, I want to add a new IK chain to make these two pieces um, stick to wherever this one goes. So wherever this one rotates up. I'm going to add a target up here to make this one auto stick to that point. So let's add our bones for that. I'm going to uh, tab into edit mode once again. Select these two points on this lower shift arm. Shift S cursor to selected. Then I can go back to my armature. In edit mode, shift A. I'm going to name these MCH. I'm just going to call this strut so it's a little bit different. 001 and then I want to parent strut.001 to my body, just like the upper um, the upper swing arm bone here. And then I'll go back to my mesh again and select this point, shift S cursor to selected. And I can go back to my bone with this tail, shift S, selection to cursor. You see the X axis is going this way, same as this upper one. That is what I want. Then I'm going to extrude a new one up to this point. And I think I already have all this selected in here. Yep, Shift S cursor to selected. So I'll just snap my cursor up there quick, and then I'll go back and E to extrude, G, Z to constrain it to the uh, Z axis. Now this bone is actually the Z axis is going uh, the wrong way here, so I'm going to rotate this. I think I need to go 90, 90 degrees. Nope, negative 90. And now our Z axis is actually pointing the same as this one. Not really necessary, but it, it does really uh, kind of help keep everything in my own head. I'm going to select this strut.002. It was auto named because I extruded it from 001. Shift S, selection to cursor. And then I need to extrude yet another bone to be the target for this IK chain. E to extrude, G and Z to constrain it to the Z axis. And that should have. Um, kept our, nope, it's a little bit different. I'll switch our roll here to negative 90 so everything is all aligned here. Now I want to parent um, this one, let me rename this MCH strut target.001. This is going to be the target of this IK chain. I want to parent it to this uh, upper IK bone here. So I'm going to select that, shift select the bone, control P, keep offset. 
in pose mode you can see what happens there that target point is always going to stay right there and then we'll have our IK chain with the the tip of this bone the tail end is always going to try to stay um, stuck to that so let's add our IK constraint select our target shift select the bone that gets the constraint shift control C add inverse kinematics so we need to configure our chain length to 2 in this case we only want to rotate this one and this one then we can go to our bone properties and tell this one only to rotate on its X axis we can lock the other two and this one also lock everything but the x-axis. Let's parent our lower swing arm mesh to that strut bone 001, control P, bone, and then we can parent our pin right here to uh, 002, select our mesh, shift select the bone, control P, bone, and now we have most of our struts working uh, perfectly with, uh, and we can also move our um, body up and down or rotate it and everything is just going to stay in line and auto rotate so that is IK constraint pretty useful for doing um, things of this nature up next we will um, add our bones for um, our hub and to be able to swing our uh, or rotate our tire rather and also be able to um, steer our hub back and forth around um, one axis around this direction so that'll be next. Until then, good luck.